Good morning. My name is Brett Thomas, one of the Operations Section Chief here on the Swan Lake incident. I'm going to give you a quick rundown of our operations today here for our fire. I'd like to focus in uh, again uh, with the efforts that, have, that, that we're continuing with over in Division Charlie. What we have over there again today is furthering some, uh, some of our mop-up goals. Uh, right now, we, we just, uh, we're, what we're down to in here is, is utilizing hand crews. We're, we're pretty much done with the mechanized work in there. And so they, those hand crews uh, are, are continuing to patrol in and along that dozer line and making sure that all those containment goals are, are kept in place. And they've had a tremendous amount of success and we'll, we'll look forward to, to uh, um, adding to that as well. But uh, overall is uh, beginning to look pretty doggone secure within the, within the uh, Division Charlie area. As we come into Division Echo today, those folks have crews and engines in there today. And they continue to focus in on a couple of the key um, recreation structures today. I know one of their uh, efforts is going to be around engineering cabin and, uh, and, and mopping up some of the interior islands ar around, that, uh, around that facility, along with some of the dozer line that goes down into the Kenai River. I know they are doing some mop up in there. We used a little bit of aviation um, assets in there yesterday, and, and uh, with all the clear air that we have, we certainly could be in that, in that mode again, depending upon conditions that, that arise. Uh, there will be a little bit of work along the highway today, and, and really that focus is, is going to be geared toward uh, some of the power line um, infrastructure, and we'll be doing some mop-up around those important power lines, uh, around those utility poles there with a, just a couple of engine crews that we have coming into us today. As we come around the incident, uh, over in Division Kilo, again, uh, that's uh, completely a, uh, a hand crew operation. Those folks have to uh, gain access across the river using uh, some boats there. And they, they have, uh, they've got about four miles of hand line in which they're working on. They have a, a, um, quite, a, quite a hose lay in there as well. And it goes all the way here from the Kenai River up um, to what, we're, what we call Surprise Creek. And, and those efforts continue. They have that mopped in about 25 to 30 feet, uh, depending upon where, where we're at on, on that line. Um, they are, they are um, you know, continuing to gain confidence in there as far as the containment goals, but we still have three crews committed to that effort for today's operation. As we go north of the Kenai River, over in what we call Division Lima. So Division Lima, again, that has three, three hand crews as well. Those crews gain access going up the Resurrection, uh, the Resurrection Trail, and their focus is on uh, what we're calling the southern end of that, uh, that slop over area that crossed the trail a number of days ago. Uh, again, those crews have saw line, and our goal is to tie that into the Slaughter Creek drainage. So they, they've got a good plan in hand. I would envision that they use some aviation assets today given all the clear air that we've had or that we have um, today. And so we're primarily using rotor wing over there. Uh, down in the, the uh, Cooper Landing area, uh, the focus there again is to continue with some of the chipping operations uh, a, lot of, a lot of great work done um, in and amongst those private communities or those, those private structures. There is an effort today with one of the hotshot crews that we're going to tag in or what we call tag in, but finish up uh, one of the contingency lines where we, we weren't able to use mechanized equipment due to the steepness of that. Um, and I know that the hand crews are committed to, to really kind of putting a bow on that, on that effort on what we're calling our southern contingency line. So that's, that's kind of a wrap for, um, for that area. And overall, uh, we've got really some good, some good weather to work today. Uh, we've got really clear, clear skies, and so we'll use, we'll use those aviation assets as, as needed. And certainly wanted to emphasize our use of the uh, unmanned aircraft. Uh, those assets have been um, extremely helpful for us in, in identifying key areas for us to, to concentrate our mop-up efforts. And I know, I know we have a plan for them to use in Division Kilo today. And I'll switch over. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in. Andy Lyon, Public Information Officer. And Brett, uh, I just wanted to ask one question that folks have been asking us, and that is uh, the conditions along the Ski Lack Loop Road. I mean, folks look at that and they see no fire and the line is black, but could you talk from a public safety aspect what conditions along that road are like and why 
we can't have people in there? No, that's a great question. Uh, I think that's important to share w with our publics. Uh, we, we continue to, to have a number of trees that continue to fall down in that area. Um, and, and so uh, the crews are, cons you know, on a consistent basis dealing with trees that continue to come down. So, so for the, for you know, for the foreseeable future, travel along that road um, out, outside of our of our you know um, of our fire folks uh, would just not be advisable. And so that that's that's why we're certainly um, keeping it in the in the condition that that we have it in as far as access. And so. That's a that's a real challenging road for us, um, and every day we are we are dealing with uh, with down trees. In fact, we're considering some mechanized equipment to deal with some of that in the foreseeable future. So, great great question, Andy, and thanks for bringing that up. Thank you. I think it's important that we also uh, take note of the incident that we're also responsible for, which is down uh, um, right outside the community of Homer. I had an opportunity to fly out to the fire yesterday and visit with those folks. Again, we have a. Uh, roughly 70 personnel assigned to the Caribou Lake Fire. They've had a, a number of very successful operational shifts, uh, real, real difficult terrain down there. And, uh, but those folks are, are, are have, uh, their containment goals are really just about, just about met. Um, in fact, we have, we have a glide path, if you will, that, that we have with those crews where we'll be, um, we'll be looking to put that fire most likely into what we call a monitor status and the crews should be off that fire by sometime around that Monday, Tuesday timeframe. Tomorrow, we're gonna have two of the crews uh, come off that and return to their home units back in the Pacific Northwest. And there'll be one crew along with a, some key leadership that'll be remaining. So that's a, that's a bit of a size up or a wrap up for our Caribou Lake Fire. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, appreciate sharing information with you all and ha have a great day. Thanks. thanks